Hi guys. Today we're going to cover section 12.1, which is all about DNA, the genetic material. This is the code of life. Um, and to summarize, there are experiments that were done to help lead to the discovery of DNA as the genetic material of life. So moving right into it, um, Mendel was a scientist who worked on discovering that molecules could be inherited. And scientists knew from that information was carried on the chromosomes in eukaryotic cells. And that there were two main components of this genetic material called chromosomes. Um, and these were DNA and proteins. For many years, scientists tried to figure out which of these molecules, DNA or proteins, was the source of the genetic information. So there was a scientist by the name of Griffith who did one of the first major experiments leading to the discovery of DNA as being the genetic material. Griffith studied two strains of bacteria, Streptococcus pneumonia, which causes pneumonia. And he knew that one strain could be transformed or changed into the other form. So that one type of the bacteria that caused death could be changed from the one that was harmless to also cause death. So this, the, the strain that he studied here was called the smooth strain of the pneumonia bacteria. Um, and it's called the smooth strain because um, it has a sugar coating, which makes the bacteria cell wall smooth. And Griffith noticed that when live S cells were injected into mice, they killed the mice. The rough strain bacteria over here did not have the sugar coat and it left their cell walls very rough. And when Griffith injected the R cells into mice, the animals did not die. However, when Griffith made a mixture of the rough cells and the smooth cells and injected the mixture into the mouse, the mouse died. So Griffith isolated live bacteria from the dead mouse. And when he isolated the bacteria and cultured them, the smooth trait was visible, suggesting that a disease causing factor was passed from the killed S bacteria to the live R bacteria. So Griffith concluded that there had been a transformation of the live R bacteria to live S bacteria. This is the experiment that set the stage to identify the transforming substance. Over here in the picture is an image of a mouse being injected with smooth and dying. The mouse being injected with the rough strain and the mouse lives. Then the mouse is injected with the S strain and the heat is killing the S strain and the mouse lives. So the strain has to be alive for it to kill the mouse. Finally, he adds both the S strain and the R strain the strain was dead, the R strain was alive, and he injected that into the mouse, and the mouse died. So from that, he was able to demonstrate the change of rough bacteria into smooth and uh, bacteria, and that there was a transfer of genetic information. Another scientist by the name of Oswald Avery and his colleagues identified a molecule that transformed the R strain of the bacteria into the S strain. He isolated different macular molecules, such as DNA, protein, and lipids from the killed S cells. Then he exposed the R cells to the macromolecules separately. When the live R cells were exposed to the S strain of DNA, they were transformed into S cells. So Avery concluded that when the S cells in the previous experiment were killed, the DNA was released and some of the rough bacteria incorporated the dead bacteria's DNA into their cells, and this changed the bacteria into the S cells. So this was the conclusion 
that was not widely accepted and many biologists began to question the experiment to determine whether proteins or DNA were still responsible for the transfer of genetic material. That leads us to the experiment done by Hershey and Chase. And these are two scientists who um, performed an experiment with definitive evidence that DNA is the transforming factor. Experiments involved a bacteriophage, which is a type of virus that attacks bacteria. Two components made the first experiment ideal for confirming that DNA is the genetic material. First of all, the, the bacteriophage used in the experiment was made of DNA and protein. Second, viruses cannot replicate themselves. They have to inject their genetic material into a living cell to reproduce. So these scientists labeled both parts of the virus to determine which part was injected into the bacteria and thus which part was genetic material. So now we can talk about radioactive labeling. Same experimenters, Hershey and Chase, used a technique called radioactive labeling to trace the fate of the DNA and protein as the bacteriophages infected bacteria and then reproduced. You take a look over at figure three, follow along and you can continue to learn about the experiment wherein they labeled one set of bacteriophages with radioactive phosphorus. Uh, these are proteins that um, okay, so proteins do not contain phosphorus, so DNA and not protein were in these viruses would be radioactive. Hershey then labeled another set of bacteriophages with radioactive sulfur, and because proteins contain sulfur and DNA does not, proteins and everything else but DNA would be radioactive. The scientists then infected the bacteria with the two groups. And they attack. When the virus is infected, the bacteria, they attach to the outside of the bacteria and inject their genetic material into the bacteria. The infect infected bacteria were separated then from the viruses. Then they went on to track the DNA. They examined group one labeled with P32 over here and found that the labeled viral DNA had been injected into the bacteria. Viruses later released from the infected bacteria contain P32, which further indicates that the DNA was the carrier of the genetic information. Based on the results here, they concluded that the viral DNA was injected into the cell and provided the genetic information needed to produce new viruses. This experiment was powerful evidence that DNA, not protein, was the genetic material that could be passed from one generation to the next.